Hey everyone, it's John here from Hachigaki back with another video and this video is going to continue the series of five NHL trades that could happen this offseason. So of course, if you are a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. Smash that like button and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. So as I go through these series, as I go through these kind of videos, I think there's a lot of hypotheticals. There's a lot of me thinking of a certain scenario that could work for both teams or two players that have a great fit going the other way. I think for this video, there's a couple of huge hot takes, a couple of huge blockbusters I'm going to go through, uh, but then also a couple that I feel like have been in rumors, have been talked about before, where it could be revisited this offseason. So, of course, let me know what you think, and let's get right into it, starting with the first trade that I think is actually very realistic. The Red Wings trading Jonathan Bernier to the Washington Capitals in exchange for Phoenix Copley, Richard Panic, and a second-round pick. I think for Bernier, he might be a guy you want to cash in on for the Red Wings. Maybe you could get even more than this for the Red Wings. Bernier played very well. And again, if you're looking at the numbers, maybe it's not this ultimate value because when you're looking at a goalie, you look at his numbers, but he didn't play for a good team with the Red Wings. He had a good year with a bad team. So I think with the Washington Capitals, if you're moving on for Braden Holpe, Bernier, this will be a rental. He has one year left on a $3 million cap hit. And he could partner up with Ilya Samsonov and help Samsonov, I would say, adjust to beating the starter. I think if you're looking at Samsonov, if he plays 45 to 50 games, you let Bernier play the rest. Samsonov adjusts to that and can play even more games once if Bernier either resigns or if he walks. So I think this could be a good scenario. Maybe the Capitals just look to one of the goalies in free agency to partner up with Samsonov. But you're giving up Phoenix Copley, who was just that cap was just being buried by the end of the season anyways. Richard Panic, you save some cap there. Panic can jump into the top nine for the Red Wings next season. And the Red Wings get a second round pick. So obviously they add on to that pile of draft picks. They're rebuilding. Um, I think it could be a good one. And Phoenix Copley could be the backup to whoever the Red Wings hopefully sign or get a different goalie. But maybe they do keep Bernier. But I'm just saying in terms of a trade, this I don't think this wouldn't be a bad thing for uh, either team. All right, so we've talked about it. Would Matt Murray get traded? I'm going to make a video specifically on Matt Murray trades, but for Matt Murray, I feel like the Minnesota Wild could be a good target. And when I'm talking about a specific trade, Matt Murray, Jack Johnson, Nick Bustat, and a second round pick, and maybe another piece. Again, this is a huge hot take blockbuster. And the Penguins acquiring Eric Stahl, Devin Dumnik, and Jonas Brodin. So if you're looking at cap dumps here, you're probably looking at Jack Johnson, Devin Dumnik. So those are swapping spots. Nick Bustat has one year left on that $4.1 million contract. Um, or cap it, I should say. Um, so it's like the Penguins losing some cap here, but they're getting it back from two players that can really help them. And Eric Stahl could jump in on that third line. We've seen the success from the Penguins when they have that very good third line center. Eric Stahl can be that. Jared McCann could play wing as well, um, but he could be that third line center. Jonas Brodin could step into that top four and have a very solid top four of Marino with potentially Brodin and have that top pair still of Dumoulin and Latang. I like it a lot. I think maybe the Minnesota Wild are giving up too much and not getting enough back and also taking back the contracts. So maybe this trade's unrealistic on the Wild side of things. But if you're talking about the plus, a second round pick, maybe a prospect from the Penguins, they did make that Zucker trade and I feel like the Wild got a lot out of that. So maybe this is the Wild's way of saying, thank you, we'll take your starting goalie in Matt Murray, we'll take a second round pick. Yeah, we'll take a bad contract in Jack Johnson with a couple years left what three and a half million he can sit on that third pair um and yeah you get the assets back so i don't know if this makes an entire sense for the minnesota wild to give up Jonas brodeen but i think for the pittsburgh penguins if you're gonna give it matt murray and give up a pick and prospect potentially on top of that uh, you want a piece that's actually gonna be i would say beneficial for you um and Jonas brodeen will be a ufa after one year and eric stall I think one year as well. So they're rentals, right? If they had more term, I would say then this is a fleece job. But the fact that Eric Stahl and Jonas Brodin are rentals, I think it's not like this ridiculous trade. So honestly, I don't mind it at all. The Penguins get rentals to win now. And they take on that Devin Dubnik contract, but then get rid of Jack Johnson, Bustad, um, while also the Minnesota Wild getting a starting goalie. All right, so Leafs and Blue Jackets. So I got my Blue Jackets jersey on right now. The Leafs trading Andreas Janssen, Travis Dermott, and Jeremy Bracco to the Blue Jackets for Josh Anderson and David Savard. I feel like Anderson might need a fresh start. And Josh Anderson, he struggled with injuries. Janssen struggled with injuries too. Um, I think David Savard, top four defenseman, 
right-handed shot. He could pr- provide a little bit of offense, a little bit of physicality as well. Um, underrated skater. I think for David Savard, he's probably the most valued piece in here today. But when you're looking at Dermot, he's very, I would say, underrated. He's got some untapped potential. Even Jeremy Bracco. I just don't think the uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets want a Sonny Milano 2.0. I think Bracco is better than Milano, of course, but uh, Bracco's got to figure some stuff out. So he's not he doesn't have this insane value. But I think in terms of this trade, the Blue Jackets save some cap potentially going forward. You got Janssen on some term. Um, Josh Anderson would be a great addition for the Leafs top nine. Savard would jump in, and you would have a top four going to next year of Riley, Savard, Muzzin, and then whoever's in that. I would say second pair, or maybe Savard's with Muzzin, but Lettinen maybe in there, maybe Justin Hall. But I like this a lot. I really do for both teams because the Blue Jackets, like I said, they potentially improve on the offensive side of things. They get a cheaper option with Dermott. Yes, they lose that right handed shot defenseman, but they have other options, I would say, and they have guys coming up. I mean, Gavrikov has been a nice surprise as well. So um, I think this is a good trade for both teams. Uh, maybe the Blue Jackets want a little more, but then Leaf fans are going to be like, hey, hold up. Baracko's still got some potential there. So, um, But I think in terms of needs, um, it, it's a good trade for both sides. All right, this is maybe a hot take, but honestly, I think this would be so much fun. And for Canadians fans that are already going to freak out, maybe, um, I don't think you realize how good Samuel Girard is. Samuel Girard's a very good defenseman. And I think when Mark Bergevin made that trade to bring Jonathan Drouin um, – from the Tampa Bay Lightning and Sergachev going to the uh, Lightning. I think Sergachev and Gerard, while they're different styles, they had the same amount of points this year, 34 points in 70 games. They're only two months apart. They're both born in 98. Uh, Sergachev's about to turn 22 as I make this video, and Gerard's 22 right now. Jonathan Duran's 25 already. Duran played with McKinnon with the Halifax Mooseheads. I think Duran... If he was to go to the Avalanche, that would be a lot of fun to see him play with McKinnon again. They were an unreal duo. And Gerard could be an insane fit for the Montreal Canadiens and step on that top power play unit going forward. He only got 34 points without power play time. I, why am I saying only 34 points? 34 points for a defenseman. And he didn't get the number one power play time until McCarr got injured. So I think that's another big piece to look at. Maybe Victor Mete is part of this. Duran, Mete for Gerard. I think Duran's got some term left. Gerard obviously just signed his contract recently. Um, so I think this could work. This could work in terms of fit. Um, and you just kind of rely on Mark Bergevin to go get that number one centerman or get that big forward in free agency. So I like this. I think the Avalanche are trying to win now. They've got some defensemen. They're trying to re-sign uh, Zadorov. Uh, they have Makar, that number one spot. And they have Bowen Byram coming up. So they, I think they can move on from Gerard if it meant give, getting a legit top six guy. And that's Jonathan Duran. They might look to that for free agency, maybe Taylor Hall. Um, but I think this is a great fit for both sides. And then hot take, huge hot take. But I think this blockbuster, in maybe a smaller sense, could make sense. A James Neal return to the Preds. Okay, I've talked about Kyle Turris maybe being a fit with the Oilers. I've talked about it in the last couple of years. And I think it could still be a great fit, whether he's playing on the right wing or playing as the third line centerman. Yes, a $6 million cap hit, not great. But Turris, Arvidsson, and Pekka Rene for James Neal, Koskinen, Jesse Pujarvi, and a first round pick. So Pujarvi and a first round pick. This is where I talk about making it smaller potentially. Pujarvi and maybe a high pick for Victor Arvidsson. In a smaller sense, I could like that a lot for the Edmonton Oilers. If the National Predators are trying to retool or trying to have a, like, because they've just been on the bubble for so long. Yeah, they made a cup final. Uh, now some of their players are getting older. So maybe Pugliarvi and maybe a second or first uh, for Arvidsson, maybe another piece. Arvidsson had an off year, so maybe the Preds would be willing to move on from him. Uh, but I just decided to put this big deal together because I think it's a huge hot take. You get Rene in Edmonton. That experience is going to be a rental, so it's just one year. It's not like you're having that bad contract or anything. Um, Arvidsson could step in on McDavid's line. Turris, where will he fit? And then James Neal, where he had success in Nashville. Miko Koskinen partners up with Saros. And then you get Pujarvi and a first round pick. I like this a lot. I think it could work. And the Oilers obviously lose two contracts in Neal and Koskinen. And the only bad contract necessarily is Kyle Turris because Rene's a, I would say a rental. He is a rental. So, and you get Arvidsson. So there's some interesting pieces here. I think the Preds and Oilers could be, like I said, Arvidsson for Pujarvi and a high pick, um, like a second round pick maybe. 
Um, I could see maybe potential there. Um, maybe a first round pick and Pugliarvi. I'm just throwing things out there, but let me know what you think. I think these are five very interesting trades, maybe a couple hot takes, but I think there's stuff that makes sense in here. Again, I'm no GM, but when I try to put things together, different fits, I've even called trades before. You guys know I have, but we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about uh, what has happened. I, I keep trying to make these videos to create ideas for you guys and just create ideas for us to have a conversation about it. So of course, if you are new, please subscribe, smash that like button. I want to see uh, you guys more. Hopefully, going forward, let me know what content you want to see on this channel. Um, leave your comments below. This was John from Hatakaki. Have a good one. Peace out.